International humanitarian law is the international law framework of rules which governs armed conflict, which in wartime protects persons who are or who are no longer participating in the, ho in the hostilities. These rules rely on international law and the Geneva Convention of 1949, and as such is a part of international law. Who is obliged to comply with these rules? Firstly, states, which means countries. And secondly, parties involved in the hostilities. The reasoning behind the implementation of these rules is that even wars have rules. There is a difference between international humanitarian law and human rights. On the 27th of April, 2016, the Al-Quds Hospital in eastern Aleppo was bombed. And as a result, sick and injured civilians were caught in the armed conflict in Syria. This resulted in the medical deprivation of access to healthcare. Under international humanitarian law, it is not allowed to bomb hospitals, and even military theoretical frameworks do not allow the bombing of hospitals. This event was an illegal example and non-compliance of international humanitarian law. And the second example is, if the International Committee of the Red Cross was refused access to a prisoners of war camp on the basis of military security. Would this be an illegal or legal scenario? It would be legal, however, it must be in relation to military necessity and it must be an exceptional and temporary measure. Prisoners of war cannot be compelled to carry out dangerous work, such as clearing out minefields. It is illegal to do so. Human rights, on the other hand, governs a couple of our other rights, such as the right to attain the highest attainable standard of physical or mental health. This right includes the right to enjoy goods, services, and facilities necessary for health. Does this mean everyone is expected to be healthy? No. However, wealthier states are expected to have a higher standard in providing medical care, even in remote areas. Another example is the Convention Against Torture or Degrading Treatment can be derogated, which means temporarily suspended. However, it must be in a time or state of war or public emergency or political instability. You may also wonder, can, this, can states derogate the access to a lawyer and not inform anyone of the reason for being detained or the alleged charges? Yes, you're right. However, the derogation has to be in a time of public emergency and it must be in relation to national security. Human rights recognizes the inherent value of every person, regardless of their background. These principles are based on equality, mutual respect, and human dignity. They are very specific and are universal. You may wonder what you can do as a member of the community to promote international humanitarian law. A lot. You can volunteer or support organizations which advocate for international humanitarian law. The Red Cross emblem protects medical and certain humanitarian personnel during armed conflict. It basically means don't shoot, I'm not a part of the conflict. 
Did you know in Australia it is prohibited to use the Red Cross emblem without the permission of the Minister of Defence? Even the Australian Red Cross requires special permission and must adhere to strict guidelines. The Red Cross work tirelessly on your behalf and your support makes an immense difference. It is international humanitarian law that protects and values every person during armed conflict.